this is the only strategy to become a Bitcoin millionaire. Risk comes, it comes at a cost, but it could potentially change your entire life. There's nothing else that gives you the reward that you get from crypto. Put your big boy pants on and let's make some money. It's, I could repeatedly do it. I know it's hard to believe, but I'm here to break all of the standards of... All right, this is the only strategy to become a Bitcoin millionaire in 2023. Yes, the market's down. There's a lot of altcoins that are not doing well right now. There's all types of crazy madness happening, hacks, regulations, people getting sued people going to jail, people fleeing countries, you name it. Cryptocurrency has been recently going through that. But I do claim here uh, with a lot of confidence that you could still make money. You not only can make money, but you could still become a millionaire. I'm putting it in the title and this is not clickbait. I'm very confident that you can continuously make money if you follow the strategies that I'm going to be talking about in this video. Now, I'm not talking about investing in your 401k, hopefully getting money with index funds and maybe making three to 7% a year and then losing it like 25% in one year. I'm not, I'm not talking about the, the baby strategies. I'm talking about legitimate high risk, high reward strategies, where obviously risk comes, it comes at a cost, but it could potentially change your entire life. Actual financial independence. That's what I always talk about. And that's what I will continue to talk about because I do it myself. I practice what I preach and I've coached thousands of people and reached millions of people with this help. This is the only strategy to become a Bitcoin millionaire in 2023. I don't see another strategy that could be executed on this level to actually get you like a 5, 10x, 20x, depending on how well your execution is. And I'm going to just lay out every detail. I want to be clear. Crypto is the greatest financial asset class to make money on planet Earth. There's nothing else that gives you the reward that you get from crypto. It also comes with risk, obviously, lack of liquidity issues. But if you know how to navigate the market, you can get a reward that you won't get anywhere else. Let me say it one more time. Although it has extreme risks and we all know it, put your big boy pants on and let's make some money. This asset class will get you a 20 to 50 X return. You can't get that with index fund in the S and P 500. You can't get that with your homeboy day trading your money, right? The day trader for eight years can't get a 30 X on his money in one year. I 127 X my money less than a year's time. It's not a, a get lucky one time situation. It's I could repeatedly do it. And I showed other people how to do it as well. I know it's hard to believe, but I'm here to break all of the standards of finance. I'm breaking all of these grandfathered, traditional, slow-paced standards in the financial industry. I know I've been gone for a while. I just moved into a house. But as you can see, I'm coming back with fire. I never stopped working. I'm settled in. Now it's time to make money. Financial Times reported the traditional portfolio consisting of 60% stocks and 40% bonds, which pretty much a lot of financial YouTubers that people respect, they promote 60% stocks, index funds, and 40% bonds. And guess what? It has seen its worst performance since 1932. If you would have followed this strategy for the past three years, you have seen the worst performance since the Great Depression. Meanwhile, I made literally almost a 20X on my entire company portfolio and my personal portfolio did 100X. A lot of these assets are down, but I sold almost a year ago. And if you don't believe me, go look at my videos. You get in, make the ridiculous returns, and then just get out. If you cannot be greedy, that's where you get the 10, 20X, 30X returns in a year, even 100X in some cases. It's rare for 100X, but it does happen. And I'm not going to sit here and give you this baby formula. Some of you want to make money. You want to make money to become financially independent. Life is too short. You need those big wins, guys, not the little small ones sometimes. You need both. You need the small ones and the big ones, but the big ones are important. The big ones change your entire situation because most people can't stay consistent for 10 years. But if you get that big win, you know, I I really just made a hundred grand. Now I can kind of like really focus and learn. That's exactly what happened to me. Sometimes you need that big win. I want to show you the nominal return of US stocks and bonds for the year 1871 to 2022. Look at 2022 at the bottom there. Look at that red mark at the bottom. Look at how bad it's been for US stocks and bonds. So if you took the grandpa basic strategy of doing 60% stocks, 40% bonds, which by the way, if you invest in your 401k, if you pay your employer a 401k money, they take money out of your check. You, you, you agreed to those terms. You have been seeing the worst performance since the Great Depression. Here's statistics and facts. If you take control of your finances, you could actually change your situation. If you let somebody else do it for you, you're going to get wrecked and they're going to take your money. Obvious stuff here. This is the variability of weekly returns for cryptocurrencies, which is 4x large 
margin in stocks, even the stock market, tech companies. I could invest in the stock market, guys. I've invested in the stock market. I probably will too. Like there's nothing wrong with it. But what I'm trying to show you here, cryptocurrencies give you a bigger range to deal with. They give you more volatility and the more volatility equals more gains and more losses. But if you mitigate your losses and you understand crypto and you understand how to navigate it and you have discipline and you really, really learn this industry, that's where you get these big wins that you won't be able to get anywhere else. Think about it. We're moving into the next infrastructure of the internet. You don't want to be a part of that. It's not just about the short term games, which we'll be talking about in this presentation. Like, why don't you just be a part of the big innovation thing? I try to tell this to people all the time. The cryptocurrency is not a niche. Crypto is an entire category of the world. It's like saying internet is a niche. It's pretty much everything. The internet is everything right now. And every niche in the world, the internet is involved with. So cryptocurrency is the same thing. It's not a niche. So get involved with that. Even if you lose money consistently for the next 10 years, being involved in a niche that's changing the entire world is fruitful. You will get hired somewhere just because of your blockchain knowledge. We're just very far ahead. And I will continue to preach this because it has changed my life. And, and there's a reason why I'm so far ahead. So I want to show you guys what the truth is. But here's a correlation between in cryptocurrencies and stocks. So it's actually beautiful, right? So for example, let's say Tesla stock increases 5%. Tesla increases 5%, Bitcoin increases 15. So it gives you more room for risk to reward. Any trader knows that increased room is actually safer because you can use less leverage. Let me say it again. A lot of people offset these small moves. So they'll invest in the S&P 500 or index funds. And that's all they'll do is they'll invest only in that. And then they'll use leverage to increase how much money they make. So a 3% move with 10X leverage is 30% increase. I don't know if you guys seen that before. A lot of day traders do that. They'll trade the S&P 500 and they use leverage. The beauty of crypto is that you can get those massive percentages without leverage. And that gives you an increased safety. Let's say you long a uh, Tesla stock. Long it means like you put leverage and you bet that it's going to go up and it goes down 20% and you have 10x leverage. That's a 200% loss. You got liquidated. So let's say it goes down, I don't know, 2% with 10x leverage. You lost 20% of your money. The problem with leverage is that you have a chance of getting liquidated. I want to work within the gray here because a lot of people think leverage is a scam. It's not a scam. It's the only way to bet on the downside of the market. I use leverage and I've been winning. But the game here is to use as small amount of leverage as you possibly can. In every case, you want to try to not use leverage. But if you have no choice, then you use leverage. Let's say you long the S&P 500 and you use 10x leverage on a 2% return. That's 20% increase. But if you get liquidated, if it goes down 100%, so 10x leverage, if it goes down 10%, S&P 500 drops 10% and you have 10x leverage, you got liquidated. There is no chance of getting liquidated if you buy Bitcoin. So if you buy Bitcoin, which is equivalent to longing, the market, it goes down, it always comes back. Bitcoin always comes back up. Leverage is not bad. You just want to use the least of it as possible. And the beauty, if I go back to the last chart, is that you get more volatility with crypto. There's more wins, there's more losses, but if you don't invest in scams, they usually always come back every four years or so with the Bitcoin cycle. If we look at the 10-year chart for returns, 2011, Bitcoin went up 1,473%. Then in 2012, 186. You don't get that anywhere else. Look at 2013, 5,507. Where do you get that? Anywhere else. But in 2014, it went down 58%. But look at the returns up. If you made 5,507, are you going to be mad about a 58% loss? You guys hear what I'm saying here? 2015, 35% increase and 125. Then look, if you make 1,331% increase, are you going to be mad about a 73% loss? No, because you made absurd amount of money. It gives you more wiggle room to be wrong. 2019, it went up 95% and then it went up 31%. It went up 90%. Not, look, Bitcoin returns, they're slowing down. But look, the loss is 81%, right? The returns are slowing down. We all know that. Big gains are still possible with all coins, like I told you guys before. Uh, if you look at Bitcoin versus gold, right? Bitcoin return, 2010. Look at the difference. Are you going to be a gold bug? Do you really want to be involved with gold? When Bitcoin increased 9,900%, but gold went up 29%. Is that what you really want to do here? Bro, you spend one third of your life at a job. You spend one third of your life sleeping. And then you spend one third of your life with free time. So you want to spend your free time returning 29%? Or wouldn't you want to be involved in an asset class and have financial education? Something that's actually like fulfilling 5,507%. I don't even know how much money that is. If you invest a thousand dollars in a two and ten thousand percent return, it's like it's it's crazy multiples, and it can actually change your life. And guess what? If you wait four years in cryptocurrency, it can actually change your life. If you wait four years in gold, you might make a little bit of money, but it's safe. But not really. It dropped twenty eight percent, and it takes too long. Like when you get that five thousand five hundred and seven percent, you get out. Stop being the guy that's like, I'm not gonna look at my investments forever. I'm just gonna wait thirty years, and then somehow it's just gonna play out. Why don't you just 
get out when it goes up 5,507%. What is this adoption of just doing nothing? This narrative is wrong. People on the internet are pushing this narrative. I'm just going to do nothing with my retirement. I'm just going to dollar cost average into index funds and 401ks and get my 7% because I know it's stable. Life is not stable. Look around you. We're potentially going to war. There's huge confrontations all over planet earth right now. And you're worried about a three to 7% return on an S&P 500 index fund. That three to 7% is not going to change anything. Some of you don't even have savings. This is exactly what happened to me. I made 127 X return. And then I took one third of it. I threw it in savings. I took another third of it. I threw it in my business and I took the other third of it and I invested it back into crypto. And then I got another 20 X the next cycle. I got savings and large amounts of money because I got one big win. You need a big win and it's possible. The slow, consistent thing is fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's a combination. You need the big wins and then you need the consistency. Stop listening to people. Look at real estate. Real estate's the safest thing on planet earth. I need a house. I don't got a house. I want a house where I can set up my Tesla charging station. I could not move ever again because I just moved for the past three weeks. It was so annoying. And that's the reasons I want to buy a house. But look at the returns on the housing market. While Bitcoin went up 9,900%, the housing market went up 28%. It went up 28. Does it even sound exciting? Are you guys excited? 2019, 95% increase. Real estate went up 29%. All I'm saying is that, yes, it's more consistent on the real estate side. But when it comes to your generation, like you generating capital to put the down payment on the house, where are you going to get that from? You got to start off with something. And I think the best way to start off is crypto. You could preserve your wealth in real estate. There's nothing wrong with that. Like I, I genuinely feel like in the future, I'm going to have multiple properties. I'm going to have my own family house as well as other rented out properties, et cetera, et cetera. I get it. And if you have less than $10 million, like if you you got a 20x on 10 million. Do the math. If you want to retire, I personally would never retire. It's selfish thought. You just want to make money, exit life, and then not deal with people. Like what? No. To the day I die, I will be helping humans on planet earth. To the day I die, that's what I do. That being said, I don't need to preserve wealth like that. I do to a certain extent, but I'm young. And a lot of you are young. And a lot of you have less than 10 million. If you only have 20k to your name, it's probably not smart. You put that on a down payment on a house and get wrecked and have to fix the electricity and have to fix the, the AC units to get a measly 300 bucks a month in rent, whip de doo and a 10% return. That's why a lot of you are stuck watching people like us play the game, which is trying to get absurd returns and offsetting the risk. Finding absurd returns, high risk, high reward, offset the risk. Don't be a degenerate. Don't be a gambler in crypto. If you're just not a gambler, you'll get your 10X. Bitcoin versus the S&P 500. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I just want to show you that cryptocurrency is the best financial asset class on planet earth to make money. And while everybody's running around like chickens with their head cut off right now, everyone's scared. I'm going to continue to stay in this market, motivate people and pull you and drag you across the finish line so you can make money in the greatest financial asset class on planet earth. And this is not financial advice, but it's also not bad advice because I do it myself and I make absurd amounts of money every single cycle. And I want you to make absurd amounts of money every single cycle because it's like a cheat code that I just keep repeating over and over again. I have a cheat code and I keep doing it and I keep showing you every single time. Look at the returns of the S&P 500. Are you going to keep gambling with leverage to buy and wait for the market to increase with leverage? 10x leverage on a, on a Tesla share. Is that what you're going to do? Or you could just buy some safe cryptocurrency asset. Don't be a degenerate and not have to do any leverage and have to worry about liquidations in any way, shape or form. Think. Let's look at Bitcoin versus the best performing stock since 2010. Now, again, I am not biased, right? So there is some stocks right here. Bitcoin, Amazon, you know, Apple. There are some stocks that do phenomenal. So it's a little bit of both. Berkshire Hathaway, JP Morgan, they got hundreds of percents of return. Now, Bitcoin typically does well. And if you look at altcoins, altcoin does way better than Bitcoin, but I'm not biased. You could do well in the stock market too, but don't do the index fund 401k thing that a lot of people promote. Like just don't do that. And I will be buying stocks by the way, probably blockchain stocks, uh, but just go for the high risk, high reward. I really wanted to hit that home for you guys. So you understand why I'm so passionate about this industry and why so many people's lives have been changed because this is the best way for me to change lives. There's no other way where I could tell someone, Hey, buy this asset. And maybe in two years, it's going to be like 20 X what you put in. And, and I do want to let you guys know that crypto is here to stay, right? So for example, 36, 6.5 million American crypto users right now. That's just in America. It's here to stay, number one, and it's also very small. There's 331.9 million people living in the US. So that's about only 11% of the United States is invested in crypto. So something that I've told you guys, and I'm going to prove to you, is the next infrastructure of the internet only has 11% of the entire US population. This is not even the world. This is United States population, which has Silicon Valley and a lot of the biggest technological innovations happening in the United States. Only 11%, guys, is coming back and you're like on the 
the forefront right now. Between 2012 and December of 2022, Bitcoin gained what? 73,250%. My whole life is literally trying to find innovative ways to convince you. There I am. That's Alex. You know what Alex is? Alex is a guy that spends his time to find innovative ways to convince people about 73,250% returns. That's what I do for a living. <laughs> and then I trade it myself uh, and I help as many people as possible. But I'm trying to show you guys what the deal is. 67% of millennials look at Bitcoin as a safe haven asset as compared to gold. The newer generations, the younger people are looking at crypto. They're looking at digital assets. They're looking at internet things. So if you're older, get caught up. A lot of you experienced the internet boom, get caught up. Millennials wealth more than doubled over 9 trillion since the pandemic began. So a lot of them were investing in cryptocurrencies, including me. But baby boomers, are still worth about eight times as much. So baby boomers have a lot more money and they will eventually have to or be forced to jump into blockchain technology because that's where everybody's going anyways, right? So you see what I'm saying here? Like it's so small. It's almost like the only people are adopting are the only ones that are getting wealth. The wealth transfer is happening in crypto. Anyone that adopts crypto will win. According to a survey by Investopedia, 38% of millennials said they have some form of cryptocurrency compared to 6% of baby boomers. Watch when the baby boomer starts coming into play and watch when the older people start coming into play. Play. And watch when the younger generations start getting older. They're all going to be adopting the next infrastructure of the internet. So I, I say to you guys, please pay attention. Do not get left behind. If you look at this website here, it basically shows the biggest financial websites on planet Earth. And there's one thing I want to tell you guys. Look right here. Very specific. Number 11. Coin market cap was top three, top five. Coin market cap is a data analytics website that shows cryptocurrency assets. Top three, top five back like a couple months ago. But right now, number 11 in the world, in the world for financial related websites when it comes to views. So the amount of people that view CoinMarketCap is 11 in the world. For people that don't think that cryptocurrency is not coming back, well, what are you doing? In the bull market, CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko were both top 10 consistently. That's views in the world. Views in the world. So it is a world asset class and it's only 11% of the people in the United States. Just think about that. It's insane. The total cryptocurrency market cap is $971 billion or equivalent to the 23rd largest economy globally. And this is in the bear market. It's bigger than countries. It's here to stay. Countries just don't disappear, right? Because their economy is big. There's a lot of people living in it. There's a lot of, you know, interactions, right? There's so many different things in a country. Well, guess what? Cryptocurrency is 23 equivalent in economy size. You think it's just going to go away? I want you to put the pieces of the puzzle together. What I'm breaking down here is crypto got the best returns. It's very cheap right now, right? Everyone's leaving the market. It is the future and we're very early. What does that say to you? One in six US adults are aware of Ethereum, making it the third most well uh, known cryptocurrency online. Not only are learning about Bitcoin, but they also know about layer one smart contract platforms, which is I I think the biggest innovation, DeFi, et cetera, et cetera. Those are the biggest ones. There are 68.42 million crypto wallets worldwide, right? These statistics are relatively small. Remember, there's billions of people. Fortnite, and this is a big one because I actually have a story with uh, one of my family members. He's young. He's like 10 years old. For Christmas, he gets uh, his gift cards, right? Bro, he spent all his money on Fortnite skins and like Roblox, digital things now. The kids are going to the digital world. Fortnite generated $5.8 billion in revenue in 2021 for Epic Games. Bro, it's a free game. Where did the revenue come from? Digital assets. Without a blockchain, they're going to probably integrate a blockchain in the future. Online assets is the future of mankind. $5.8 billion of revenue from a free game. In the past, I would have bought a Nintendo 64 game. Now it's all free. I can buy a free game and everybody's using it and they're buying skins so they can flex to their friends. Call of Duty. Bro, there's skins that go for hundreds of thousands of dollars. You guys know that, right? It's a real thing. Donald Trump generated over $5 billion in revenue from his NFT trading car collection in 12 hours. That's absurd. Is it billion? Is this a typo? I think this is million. $5 billion in revenue. That's insane to me. Here's a list of companies that jumped into crypto and are implementing blockchain technology. JP Morgan, Bank of America, Visa, MasterCard, Microsoft, Amazon, Overstock, Fidelity, PayPal, Cash App, Whole Foods, Starbucks. The biggest companies on planet Earth are adopting crypto. What are you doing? Why are you getting discouraged? Facebook spent more on the metaverse than NASA spent on their first rocket to the moon. Are you catching what I'm saying here? Adjusted for inflation too. They spent more on the metaverse than we did going to the moon. Think about that. But you guys are worried about crypto. Are they going to come back? 
Is crypto going to come back? A lot of people don't stick anything out for a year. If you stick it out for three years, you have a very good chance at making absurd amounts of wealth, 10 to 20 X's. If you keep making excuses, you keep leaving the market. I can't help you. Crypto is most certainly coming back. But the question is, are you coming back? It is so easy, bro. I could sleep doing this. I could literally not do anything, buy Ethereum and get a 10 X. I could just literally wait. You know me, I'm ambitious. I'm trying to create businesses. I'm trying to get to the next level. I don't want to I don't want to sit around and do the easy part, but if I was a lazy person, I would buy Ethereum, wait for the 10x cash out. I have friends that are unemployed or do like little part-time work that are still living off the Ethereum gains that I helped them make in 2016 when I bought Ethereum at $3. I told my brother and some friends to buy it too. They did. They made a whole bunch of money and still to this day, 7 years later, he doesn't have a job and he's using his savings from what he made in 2016. He's doing his music thing and he's not being lazy that's not what i'm saying but he has no income in music and he's just trying to be a musician and he's, he's trying to make beats and things like that and he's literally living off of it you must be able to withstand the long suffering that's the key here you have to withstand a storm and this is actually a big revelation i just recently caught it's not about the highs and the lows it's about how long you can last you know there's times when we win big and we get you know ego and pride and we get greedy and you know we get wrecked because of that and there's times when it's really low and you want to give up it's not about those two if you could clip those off and like try to filter those out like the pain you feel in your low and the pride you feel when you're high, if you could somehow just like ignore that and withstand, this is how you make a lot of money. Any industry you want, it's literally never about how hard you work most of the time. It's usually like how long you've been in it. That's like the biggest variable. You could get wrecked for 20 years straight in crypto. And then the year 21 is where like you get a big breakthrough that makes more revenue than 50 to 100 years worth of salary. That's a thing. That happened to me, but it's a way shorter period of time. I went hard at entrepreneurship for three to four years, caught crypto and then made millions. It's not about how much money you can make now, guys. It's how long are you going to stay in crypto? How, are you going to be a professional? Are you really going to get it? Because I'm at a point now where it's like, I'm not perfect, but it's very easy to predict what coins are going to pop off, what, what coins are going to do well. Here's a little story I wanted to dive into about Donald Trump. Uh, before Donald Trump was known as the wealthiest president in US history, he faced major financial battles. He had at least six businesses file for chapter 11 bankruptcy. And at one point, he had a millions of dollars worth of debt. He's now valued at over $3 billion and is known as one of America's top businessmen. That's a testament. Now, I, you know, I, you know, I don't glorify him. He has a lot of issues in his life. In a financial perspective, this man is a true testament to long suffering. He went through it all and look, he's worth $3 billion. Walt Disney. Walt didn't have a straight path to success. He faced many financial trials and tribulations along the way. He was almost forced to file for bankruptcy. Like he almost lost his business during the production of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs due to a lack of funding and capital. But he remained determined and persevered through these financial turbulent times and still made managed to scale Disney to $130 billion brand. Pretty much every entrepreneur, person that's trying to make money has a story. You know it. Steve Jobs co-founded Apple at the age of 21 and was worth millions by age 23. He recruited another CEO and the CEO actually ended up firing him, the company that he built. He lost everything he worked for, but that didn't stop him at all. He started his next company, which is actually called Next, which was acquired by Apple and Jobs became the CEO of Apple again. Every CEO goes through the story. Anyone that, that's trying to win something goes through a similar story. You have to go through it, but there's something that's in your favor. The law of averages. If you never give up, the law of averages suggests that you are going to win. Eventually you're going to get your ideal outcome. As long as you keep attempting at achieving your goal in vast quantities, if you just continue to do something. So for example, if you want to be a soccer player, if you do it forever, there's a very good chance that you will probably be a soccer player as long as you pick the right thing, right? This means that if you keep your success rate extremely low and keep going, keep chasing your goal, your idea outcome will eventually come to pass. And it's basically what you've always been looking for. So don't give up, keep trying. And the more you try, the closer you are to reaching your end goal. The point here is that the law of averages basically states that as long as you don't give up, you win. You can accumulate massive losses and waste large periods of time. And as long as you don't give up, that's when you actually win. So again, this is a rally call to people in cryptocurrency. Don't give up. We're going to do a Bitcoin price prediction in this video. Bitcoin price is going down and it's going to get harder. And this is why I'm making this rally call video here. Uh, you know, I don't want you guys to think that I'm like buying all coins or anything. What I'm trying to tell you is that all coins will come back eventually. And if you just stay in the market, you stay patient, you will win. 72% of people who consider themselves successful attribute their success to specific habits such as hard work, consistency, dedication, and discipline. That's the part that will set you apart. I just want to motivate you guys. 96% of people who don't achieve success blame it on their lack of effort. Pretty much every strategy I've ever implemented, every single one of them would have worked if I had more discipline and I had put in more effort into it. There's no strategies that just work because you did it. You make them work. If you're not making money, it's due to a lack of effort, not because cryptocurrency is a scam. You must not give up. We're entering a new paradigm of understanding. Cryptocurrency right now is the world's greatest, best kept secret.
Only 11% of the people know about it because the narratives are so manipulative and people do not know how to get their head out of the sand. A lot of people manipulate it financially. They manipulate the narratives. Bro, if you guys knew what I knew, billionaires, they want to keep it a secret. Let me show you an example of that. I'm going to jump into my screen uh, and show you guys what I mean by the world's best kept secret. But I, I want to go into effective communication, clear, respectful, and assertive communication with others. We live on an earth with a lot of different humans, right? It's pretty much everything if you think about it. I mean, if you look at a billionaire, what do they use their money for? They use their money for things that make their life better or human labor. That's pretty much it. Let's say I'm a billionaire. First thing I buy is a boat. What does a boat do? The boat gets you from point A to Z quicker, right? And it makes you happy because you're on a nice boat and you get to spend time in the sea. I buy a private jet, it gets you from point A to Z quicker. I buy a car, it gets you from point A to Z quicker. But guess what? All of those things are created by what? Humans. So really what you're buying is the human labor it takes to make those things, which makes your life more efficient. Now, as a billionaire, you also have probably companies. And what are you doing in those companies? You're hiring humans to do things to make you money. So if you really think about what money is, you're buying time. You're buying time of other humans because you have a bigger amplification effect. Sorry, this is detailed probably for another video. I'll explain it later. But the gist is, is that money equals time. If you get paid $15 an hour, your hours worth $15. And the goal is to try to get that number up as big as possible. The goal is try to be worth like a million an hour, right? That's the goal. When you purchase and leverage time, you're essentially leveraging other people's time by running a business and having people work for you. It's very interesting. But healthy relationships will allow you to do that better, right? Building and maintaining relationships. Nobody wants to work for, you know, a bad boss. I don't care how much money you, you know, you pay. If he's evil, if he's mean, nobody wants to work for you. Not only that, but you can get actually free labor if, if you do good things for people. For example, if you help them financially, you can get free labor. If you help them, uh, you know, and inspire them and they like you and they want to follow you, you can get free labor. Healthy relationship is, is very important not just with the labor and business part either. You got to maintain healthy relationships with your family and your friends and everybody around you. You can't just be a degenerate, right? They don't like you and then you have no friends and then you're lonely and then it just turns into this whole rejection thing. So this is also very important. Time management, goal setting, effectively managing time and setting and achieving meaningful goals, being able to track your progress, very, very important. Being able to track yourself, hit your goals, guys, hit your goals. It, these things are pretty obvious. I have to restate it in a different way. And Alex's version, right, this is my version. Um, so what I'm trying to explain to you is that you need to be able to plan things and hit it effectively, okay, with a high quality and increased quality over time. So if you plan project A and you hit it, next time you have to plan project B, hit it in a smaller amount of time at a higher quality level. And this is how you become better and better over time. Um, and, and, you know, I talked about it before. A lot of times people have issues with, with focus. Uh, they have issues lusting over women. They have issues of thinking of money all day. Personally, you don't have to adopt my belief system, but all of those issues were solved when I got the Holy Spirit. All these things are good, but they're kind of like the surface level watered down version of the Bible. The Bible is the greatest self-help book I've ever had in my entire existence. And the foundation is God, right? The God is a million times more powerful than any self-help book I've ever read in my life. I've read hundreds of self-help books, never got the satisfaction or never got the knowledge I've got, the wisdom, the hand down wisdom, the, the timeless principles that I got in the Bible. So I did have to state that for you guys. You don't have to be religious to hear what I'm saying. The Bible is the oldest book uh, ever known. It's the, the, people call it the first book ever created. So the wisdom passed down from that time period still stands today. So you don't even have to be religious. Uh, and a lot of religions besides Christianity, which is what I am, they actually reference the Bible. So there's a lot of good things in there that you guys can definitely dissect for your self-help journey. And pretty much all of these other things that we talked about were watered down versions of uh, the 10 commandments. Uh, so yeah, go look into that for yourself. So let's jump into the second part. Let's talk about the basics of money. You have to understand money. I'm going to dissect it a little bit in this video, but really you can spend years studying money and exactly what it is. A lot of people want to trade. They're trying to trade. They're trying to trade and they don't even know what money is. They're literally trying to trade assets. They're going to put 10K in, in a trading account, but they don't even know what durability means. This, this is sad. So I want to take personal responsibility for my audience and I'm going to show you what money is. I'm going to just explain to you so that you don't get left in ignorance because you will lose money if you're ignorant to what money is. Okay. Basics of money. It's a medium of exchange, which means that it's a tool used to facilitate transactions between people. Okay. So here's properties of money, just like you have properties of bikes. Yeah. There's 10 different types of bikes, but a property of a bike is what a wheel, 
a seat, right? Well, some of them don't have seats, <laughs> but you get the point. Uh, you know, and a wheel, a steering wheel, right? It's something to steer it. These are all properties of a bike. So money is the same thing, and there's all different types of money. The first one, durability. Money should be able to withstand wear and tear, right? If money just disintegrates, and back in the day, there was money that would disintegrate. For example, salary comes from the word salt, but it's actually very low durability because salt can dissipate it can go away it can fly away with wind if you pour water water on it it's hard to transfer right salt is a very bad durability so this is an element of money and there's all different types of money some money for example gold has a high durability it's very durable i would say even higher than that would be a cryptocurrency it's extremely durable why because it's literally digital you cannot break it like it's impossible so durability is a great element divisibility money should be able to be divided into smaller units so that it could be used for transactions varying amounts Okay, so that's important too. Some money has low divisibility, very low divisibility, right? For example, if you look at gold, you can't really buy a cup of coffee with gold. Or maybe you can if you order like those one gram gold things, but nobody does that. And it's very hard and annoying uh, to uh, divide gold up, right? Nobody does. I don't, I'm pretty sure you know, uh, nobody in this video has done that before. <laughs> I've seen it on TikTok, but nobody does that, okay? So divisibility, you've probably, you know, used a penny before though, right? You've probably used 25 cents because the dollar has divisibility, right? So this is an element of that. Uh, cryptocurrency has a high divisibility too. Uh, Bitcoin is, is way more divisible than you, even the United States dollar. If you look at a dollar, it divides into a cent, right? So there's a hundred cents in a dollar. So uh, the dollar is divisible by a hundred. I believe uh, cryptocurrency, don't quote me on this, when it comes to Bitcoin specifically, is divisible by like 10,000 or 100,000 or something like that. Look up Satoshi's. My goal is not to go into the specifics because that's irrelevant, but you could divide Bitcoin way more than you can divide the dollar. The next one, scarcity. Money should have a limited supply so that it returns its value over time. So for example, gold has a limited supply. What is a supply? Supply is how much is there on planet Earth, right? There's a limited supply because... There's only so much gold on earth. I mean, they're finding more, but that's what you call inflation. So for example, if you have 100 gold bars on planet earth and every year uh, one gold bar is found when they're digging, then that's an inflation of one gold bar. Scarcity is really important. Why? Because let's say hypothetically, they find 100 gold bars every year. So you have a supply of 100 and it's literally doubling. Bro, that's a lot of gold bars. So the value of the gold bars will go down. So if, if the money can be printed like the Federal Reserve, so when it comes to fiat currencies, which is like USD or dollars or government-backed currencies, they actually have little to no scarcity. Why? Because the Federal Reserve could just print it. They could just print it at will whenever they want, right? So when it comes to scarcity, United States dollar or any fiat currency or any, any government-backed currency doesn't really have too much scarcity. Bitcoin has 21 million in existence. Bitcoin has 21 million and there's literally no way you can print more than that. And Bitcoin has a high scarcity. And this is why one Bitcoin's worth right now like eighteen to twenty thousand dollars. And that's why the value is so high. It doesn't mean you have to spend twenty thousand dollars to get a Bitcoin. I told you, Bitcoin's divisible. You can buy one dollar worth of Bitcoin if you want. It's divisible by like a hundred thousand Satoshis. So this is really important, okay? That even though the value of the, of the Bitcoin's high, you can still get small amounts. You can buy $10 with a Bitcoin if you want. Recognizability. People should be able to easily recognize money. So when it comes to United States dollar, obviously this is the most recognizable currency on planet Earth. It's the world reserve currency, meaning every country essentially adopted USD because of the strategic power of the United States. Now, Bitcoin, not as recognizable. Not This is where Bitcoin and cryptos lose. Not everybody recognizes cryptocurrency as a currency. They don't want to buy it. They don't want to touch it. I do believe it's going to change in the future, but this is a property of money. Next one, store of value. Can the money be saved and used for later? We talked about salt. Salt, it's kind of hard to store salt. It's pretty difficult. Imagine having $100 million worth of salt. What does that look like? It's probably like a mansion filled with salt, right? So store a value could mean how you store it and also the value of it, right? Salt will probably depreciate over time because people could just make a lot of salt. Back in the day, salt had high value. And this is where why salary came from salt because back in the day, it was hard to find salt. Now it's easy to make salt. So everybody could just, 
this is similar to scarcity, right? Things that are a good store of value have limited supplies, okay? Unit of account, money is used to measure the value of goods and services and record financial transactions. So this is very similar to uh, divisibility, um, you know, but, but this is the measurement of it, right? So the money is used to measure the value of goods and services. How easy is it to measure uh, that item with your money? Right, so for example, if you have, I don't know, a hat for $25, how easy is it to recognize that that hat is $25 and, and your actual currency? Bitcoin, it's a little bit more difficult. Why? Because $25 is like, if you do the math, it's like 0. 0.0000162 of a Bitcoin. But it's pretty simple with fiat currencies, it's just 25 of the dollars, right? So unit of account's important as well. So that's the basics of money. I will admit this gets deeper. And in the free masterclass, we will have presentations that will show you these things on a deeper, more professional level. If you're looking to take your investment serious, head on over to the link in the description below to enter the free group. It's 100% free. It's, it's, it's very interesting. Um, but I do want you guys to understand kind of the broad perspective that there are elements of money and different monies have different properties. It's that simple. Okay, let's jump into the next one. Let's go into risk management. We talked about that before. You guys got to be able to manage risk. And if you think about it, every decision on planet Earth is a management of risk. What do I mean by that? Every decision on Earth is a management of risk. So, for example, if you decide to brush your teeth today, <laughs> back to the breath stinking, uh, you know, example, if you decide not to brush your teeth today, then there's a risk that somebody will call you stank, vice versa. If you do decide to brush your teeth, then yeah, there's a higher chance that nobody will call your breath stank. <laughs> That's pretty much every decision on planet earth. There's a pro and a con. A lot of people think, well, I don't like risk. I like safe. Doing nothing is a risk. People don't get this, but doing nothing's a risk. Right now, inflation is at 8%, 6 to 8%, depending on what numbers you look at. So that means that doing nothing with your money, you're losing 6 to 8%. We talked about inflation. Inflation is basically how much money is printed per year, which devalues your money because it decreases the scarcity element. So that means inflation is the reason why your dollar goes less than it did in 1960. You guys ever heard like someone older say, hey, I used to buy a can of Coke for 10 cents. The reason why they could buy it for 10 cents is because inflation was significantly lower back in the day. Everything's a risk. Meaning if you do nothing with your money, that is technically a risk at 8% a year. You're risking 8% a year. So literally every variable of your life is a risk and you must know how to manage it, especially with your trading strategy. Boom. I hit, I hit home for a lot of people there. You must, let me say it again. You must be able to learn specific risk management strategies in your life, as well as your investment and trade strategy. It's super important. I use kind of two risk measures. The first one is the Martingale strategy and we'll explain it right now. So basically here's a betting simulation and I want you guys to pay attention for real because this can get a little complicated. So take a second, lock in. If there's anybody in your house distracting you, tell them to shut up. I'm just kidding. Like on this video, turn on the post notifications and subscribe to the channel. Let's lock in. Okay, you guys pay attention to what's going on. So the first things first, I want to go over this betting montage. Let's say that this is, you know, the betting montage number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. What do I mean by that? It's like a series, right? This is like game one, game two, game three, game four, game five, okay? Let's say you flip a coin, heads and tails, 50-50 odds, right? You flip a coin, you bet what? $10 right here, boom, bet $10. Oh man, I lost. You're down 10 bucks, right? You bet again, I bet 20, right? And this is what the Martingale strategy is. The, simply put, you just double every time you bet. If you double every time you bet, the one time you win, you'll make up for all the losses. And I'll explain what I'm saying. So the second time, oh, I'm down 10 bucks. I'm gonna bet 20. Now I'm down 30 because I lost the first 10 and I lost the second 20, right? Then I bet again. Okay. I got to double it. $20 is double. I got to bet 40. Now I do it again. I lost. Dang, bro. I lost 10, 30, and 40. I'm down $70. I bet again, but I got to double because I'm sticking to my risk management strategy. 80 bucks. Boom. I win. I'm down 70, but I won 80. What does that mean? I just won $10. It's crazy. This strategy is amazing. So literally I lost one, two, three times. The fourth time I bet, I only had one win out of four and I made $10. You see what I'm saying? Let's keep going. Second montage or second series, whatever you want to call it, right? I go into the second series. I bet $10, I happen to win. Bet, I'm up 20 bucks now. Let's go into the third series, right? I bet 10, I lost it. Dang, bro, I lost. I bet again, 30, I lost. Or I bet 20, sorry. I bet 20, I lost, I'm down 30, right? I bet again, I'm down 10, I'm down 20, which is a total of $30. I bet again, I won 40, now I'm up. You see what I'm saying? People don't use risk management in their trading and they're all, all over the place. They don't track anything. They don't use risk management. And this is why they don't consistently win over time. Now, if you use this 
I'll talk about that later. That's a little bit advanced. Um, we'll be talking about advanced risk management strategies in the future, guys. But let's keep going. This one's a nasty one. Okay, so you're down. So you lost your first 10. You lost 20. You lost 40. You lost 80. You lost 160. You lost 320. So you keep doubling, right? You literally put a $320 bet and you lost. You double it again, 640. So again, if you add this loss, this loss, this loss, this loss, this loss, and this loss, and they win, that means you're down 630, but you're up 640 because you doubled it. Let's do the math real quick. I'm going to erase this so we can get some clarity here because this is actually pretty important. And we're worried about the left side here because these are the actual bet amounts. And then the right side is just that it's actually like the numbers, the truthful numbers. What do I mean by that? Okay. So for example, you bet 10, you lost. So you're down 10. You bet 20. That means what? You're down $30. So that's what I did here, $30. You bet 40, you're down 70 right? Right here, 70. You double it, you bet 80. Now 80 plus 70, you're down 150. You get the point, right? And then you double it, you're down 310. You double it, you're down 630. Now, if you double it again, what's double of 320? 640. So you double that and you make this bet. Right here, I'm down negative 630 with this betting montage. Right here, I'm down 630, right? but I got to double the 320. So I bet 640, boom, I win, I'm up $40. So in this case, as you can see, okay, I lost one, two, three, four, five, six times, the seventh time I won. So I literally lost six out of seven times. The seventh time I won, I was still plus 10. So plus 10, and it's consistency, right? So, and then we have the last series, which is simple, straightforward. You bet 10, you're down 10, you double it, you win, plus 10. So you see what I'm saying? This is very interesting. Also, we do have a actual software that will automatically calculate this for you in the free group. So if you don't know what to bet with your trading strategy, we actually do it for you. So you really don't have to worry about it. But this is very, very important, guys. And I want to show you in real time when it comes to a chart. So you saw it with a 50-50 odds is different on a chart. So what do I mean by that? Let's say hypothetically right here, I bet and I'm, I'm red. I lost. Okay. So let's, I bet, let's say I bet that the market went down, but it actually went up. All right. So let's go into actual examples in the market so you can see how it works in the market. Very interesting stuff. Obviously, we just talked about 50-50. Let's jump into the actual market. So the first thing is if you could identify a trend, it's very important, right? So the trend here is up. Let's say we're here. Let's just cut all of this out, right? This is gone. The trend is up. It's clear. And there's some macro indicators you guys could use. And we're going to be talking about macroeconomics in this video so you can see where the trend is going. So let's say hypothetically you make your first bet. It's a W because it went up. I won. Green, right? So I made money. You make the second bet. It's red. You lost. Okay. You lost short term though. It went down. Let's say you bet that the market was going up with this bet. That means you're down right here. But look, if you hold out and you have good risk management and you know the trend, this ends up being positive over here. Look, it's up. So it's actually compounds if you understand the trend. Now it's very important because if you do this wrong, you could lose a lot of money. So I want to be clear with you guys. If you guess the trend wrong, okay, this is important. If you guess that this is going down and you keep making bets going down, you're going to get wrecked. You're going to lose a lot of money. And I would argue if you use good risk management, you'll still lose. You could even bet against the trend literally and still make money with the Martin Gale strategy, but that's a little bit too complex. I want to keep it. I want to keep it simple. So I lost here, but this turns positive again, eventually, right? I bet again, boom, double it. This is positive. I bet again, this is negative now, but it eventually turns positive. And you see what I'm saying? If you keep doubling it the same way we did before, all of these bets will make money as long as the trend is up. This is how I'm able to win the majority of my trades. A lot of traders, they're like 50-50, but with risk management, they make money. They'll lose five uh, out of 10 times, but their, their risk management makes some money. This is why I'm able to make money over and over again. As long as you identify the trend, I have a track record PNL of winning more than I lose, but I bet a lot less money and I use very, very tight risk management strategy. But you know, this, it could go south uh, very quickly if you don't know what you're doing. But I did want to show you guys how it works in the market. It's the same thing with the downtrend, literally the same thing. But instead of longing the market, instead of buying coins and longing the market, you short the market. If you short the market, it's the same thing. You're betting that the market goes down. And this is why people are saying leverage trading is a scam. I do believe for the most part, people use it in a scammy way. They'll, they'll do 100x leverage on a coin and get wrecked. I really do believe that they'll, they'll gamble uh, their money. But when it comes to specifically you know, using low leverage, 
you have to short the market. Why? Because there's no other way to bet on the downside. There's no asset you could buy that bets that the market's going down. So if there's a five-year cycle and half the year, uh, half the five-year cycle, 2.5 years, the market's going up, and then 2.5 years, the market's going down, if you never leverage, then the 2.5 years the market's going down, you're going to lose money the entire time and bet against the trend. It doesn't make sense. You could use le 1x leverage, guys, by the way. I want to say that. You could use 1x leverage. People think that just using leverage and 100x, no, that's how you get wrecked. Don't use 100x leverage. It's not smart. I basically just explained to you the risk management and how it works in the market. Now let's talk about how to identify the trend. The best way to do it is macroeconomics. You could read the definition, but the gist is, it's the economics behind the world conditions, the macro, the macro environment. What's happening in the world? What's happening in the United States? What's happening in individual states? Uh, what's happening in, in individual cities? When we get to cities, that's where it starts to become microeconomics. So what's happening in the entire world? What, what direction is the world going? Super powerful th that you guys spend a lot of time in macroeconomics because it will give you the trend at a clear it gives you a clear trend. But I want to go over one principle of macroeconomics. Again, people study macroeconomics for 10 years. All you need to know is the basics for now. And as you develop as a trader, you'll learn more and more. Let's talk about demand, okay? Supply versus demand. One of the basic principles of macroeconomics, okay? Let's talk about, for example, what creates demand. So demand is what? If you have 100 pair of Jordans, I did this with gold before. Let's, let's, let's do a little different one. Let's say you have 100 pair of Jordans, right? Let's say Jordan drops these new exclusive ones. There's only 100. Versus they drop the dunks. The dunks are very common. There's millions of dunks out there, right? Which one's going to be more valuable? The one with only 100 pairs is going to be more valuable. That's basically supply versus demand. Demand is how many people, how many people want that item? Supply is how many there is there. So if nobody wants it and it has a low supply, meaning let's say there's only 10 in existence, but nobody cares about it, then it still will be valueless. But let's say, for example, everybody wants and there's 10 in existence, then it'll be extremely valuable. Let's say hypothetically there's a billion in existence and everybody wants it, it's probably not that valuable. So when you want the asset to appreciate in value, you want to have a small amount and a lot of people wanting it. A small amount, a lot of people wanting it, number go up. That's how numbers go up. <laughs> That's how you make money, all right, when it comes to investing. All right, so what creates demand? What are the variables that create demand? First things first, population. An increase in the number of consumers in any market can increase the demand for goods and services. What does that mean? If more people want Jordans, then yes, that limited supply, the value of the Jordans will go up if more people want Jordans. Simple as that. Income, the type of people that want Jordans. If they're rich, then the value goes up. If the people that want Jordans are rich, the value goes up. This is why you see people charging uh, $20 million for a car and there's still people that will buy it. If you think about a company that makes one car, if they just literally make one car for $20 million, they just made $20 million. And maybe it cost them a million to make, they made $19 million profit, right? So having a market where there's extremely rich people involved, a demographic of people that are rich, that increases demand, okay? Next one, prices of related goods, right? What you price the item is important as well. If you drop the price, more people want it. If you increase the price, it might have this element of people like, hey, maybe I want that item because it's priced high. So it's kind of like a give take, depending on your dem demographic and depending on what you're selling and depending on how you market it will also create demand or decrease demand, okay? Which brings me to the next point, advertising and marketing. If you make the, the item super desirable, and everybody wants it and it's perfect for the person, like everybody really, really wants this item, then it will increase demand. Expectations, that's another one. What people expect out of the pro project. There's a lot of people that use this in the wrong way. They'll, they'll make the expectations of the project like the greatest thing on planet earth uh, and then under deliver. That will be short term demand. So short term, if you hype up the thing and it's amazing and everybody wants it, but then the deliverability, you know, the item's actually not that good, it will actually decrease demand over a long period of time. So obviously when you're running a business, you wanna prioritize the long term or the short term. The long term is so much more important, right? Um, and this is how you keep a steady demand with your product, all right? Um, the last one, government policy. Sometimes the demand will increase because of a policy of a government. The government will be like, look, I don't like crypto. You know, we're going to regulate stable coins out of existence, which is probably happening soon. Uh, so all stable coins will get hit, right? This is what creates demand. Very important, guys. What creates supply? What's well, very simple. When it comes to money, it's the Federal Reserve. They get to choose to print or not print, okay? There's some supplies... Like, for example, gold, that depends on how much they mine, right? Bitcoin, it's automatically 
programmed in, okay? Very, very important, guys, uh, to understand that Bitcoin's automatically programmed in. Why? Because everybody knows the guaranteed supply. That's super important. Everybody knows exactly how much Bitcoin there is. Uh, in the Federal Reserve, we don't know. We have to take the opinion of a guy. He might print, he might not print, who knows? So as you can see here, Bitcoin has a fixed supply of 21 million, which brings me to the next point of the strategy. Once you understand macroeconomics, okay, which that was a little taste of it. Once you really, really understand macroeconomics, then you, you should look into the micro. And what do I mean by that? So you understand the big picture. You understand where the world's going. Now you have to hone in on fundamental analysis on the specific thing you're going to buy. I call it altcoins because I invest in crypto, but some people invest in stocks. And that's called stocks fundamental analysis. And what does that mean? You analyze the fundamentals of the project. You see, okay, what do they have? What strategic advantages do they have? Do they have a superior CEO? Do they have marketing capabilities? Is their product amazing, right? You look at a product, you dissect the product, and you try to make decisions for the future. And that's what we do for a living. Not completely. I have different variables. We'll talk about different strategies, uh, but here's kind of five breakdowns. I do have a complete checklist. You will get access to it in CoinPix Inner Circle. We have an Inner Circle group. You'll learn about it when you join the free group. But basically, it breaks down every cryptocurrency on a scientific level. You could literally look at any variable of a crypto coin, rate it one out of 10, and you'll know if it's a good buy or not, okay? If you combine that, with our coach's technical analysis, it becomes very lucrative. You gotta understand what to buy. That comes from fundamental analysis. And then timing comes from like technical analysis, order blocks, liquidity levels, things of that nature. Um, so these are kind of just five variables, the overarching variables that you can research for yourself and really learn and just use good fundamental analysis. It's that simple. But I do wanna show you kind of how the strategy works. So how we use it is we look at the overarching uh, industry of crypto. Then we, we kind of pick trends or sectors or wherever you want to, whatever you want to call it. Okay. There's individual use cases solving specific problems within the sector. What do I mean by that? So for example, you might see a metaverse token, right? And the metaverse token is solving problems in the metaverse industry. Recently, there's been AI tokens, right? That's a individual sector. That's a sector within crypto where there's tokens that just talk about AI, right? and we analyze it and we look at all the tokens together. We, we you know, look at, again, the marketing of the AI token. We look at the leadership, the product, the industry or trend and the tokenomics. We look at all of these variables and we compare and contrast them to other AI products. So if we look at the individual projects, that's like a actual example, a visual representation of the individual projects. You guys see it? There's little projects within the sector. And then we go into it, we start using good risk management with the Martingale strategy. So what I mean by that is, if it's a baby market cap coin, one to 10 million, we're investing way less, way less than a medium or a large market cap. Large market caps get more allocation because there's less risk. But there's, again, baby market caps, large market caps, depending on how big the market cap is, it helps you with a risk management model. It's not perfect. Market cap is a very misleading metric. You must understand the variables behind market cap, which is what we're actually creating CoinPix Masterclass for to give you guys all the variables and explain to you everything. But it's a good risk. It's good. It's good. And this video is already getting extremely long. I'm not, I can't go into all of it. You just got to join the, the masterclass and, and, you know, really ask these questions. And if you look at it, risk management works. So for example, if you invest in a small market cap, then the small market cap coins, they will likely fail because they're just way smaller. The smaller ones fail, right? But then the larger ones consistently win if you, you know, bet on the trend. So if you bet on the trend over a longer period of time, larger market caps will return less percentages, but they'll win way more. Okay. So it's good risk management. All right. And which brings me to my next point, which is the compound effect. So this is uh, what we just talked about is more long-term stuff, right? It's, it's long-term. Uh, when you use fundamental analysis, more long-term, but the timing of things, which brings me to my next point, Nick, is a coach in CoinPix Inner Circle, um, the timing of things is very important as well. So he does very similar risk management strategies, but he does it with day trading and swing trading. He'll hold positions uh, for shorter periods of time, but the small profit he gains, he reinvests. What do I mean by that? So for example, let's say you have 100 bucks and you made 10% on your trade. Let's say you take a trade, you make 10%. That 10% is added to the pot. Now you have $110. Now let's say you take 10% again. 10% of 110 is $11. So now you have more money to bet. 
If you keep compounding all of the small trades, it actually turns into this massive win that is insane, by the way. Here's two examples of a compounding your money. Over time, if you keep compounding and you play it by percentages, so we talked about before doubling your bet. If you use the Martingale strategy, but instead of using specific dollar amounts, you use percentages, it can really change everything for you. You can have a compound. For example, let's keep going through the numbers. Let's say you have $100, you win 10%, there you go, you have $110, let's keep going. Let's say you bet, uh, what's 10%? You win $11, you add 11, now you have 121. That compound effect keeps going and it gets absolutely crazy. The numbers are ridiculous over a long period of time. That's the thing, people can't stick it out for 10 years. If you compound $2,000, for 10 years, it will equal like millions of dollars if you do it right, depending on the percentages you get every month. So if you really hone in, the compound effect can be very po uh, powerful. So going back to the strategy, this video is very long, formula to a seven figure portfolio, it's very simple. Number one, put yourself in an asymmetrical risk environment. What does that mean? An environment where it's new and emerging. We talked about crypto. I gave you guys the entire breakdown of how crypto is this new thing that's gonna really work. It's a you know very big secret. And when the market goes down, I'm gonna be buying it like crazy. The second one is risk management. If you're buying this very risky asset, high risk, high reward, you gotta use risk management or you're gonna get wrecked. Um, you combine that with fundamental analysis and a short-term cash flow in the form of day trading or developing cash flow with an in increase of raise or uh, you know marketing. There's all types of forms of cash flow. Nick, our coach, does day trading for cash flow. It depends on what you pick, right? Asymmetrical risk environment, risk management, fundamental analysis with cash flow. That is what you call easy investing. That is what you need to know. That is the strategy that nobody wants to tell you. They give you the snippets. This is hard for me to make. I can't even explain to you every variable of this strategy because of how complex it is. But that is the overarching explanation. And this is why I want you guys to go ultimately to CoinPix Masterclass. Go to CoinPix Masterclass, this is what we teach. You could ask me any question about any variable of this and I would answer it for you. And we could all learn and win together and you'll become a good trader and you will give me trades one day. You're gonna be like, Alex, yo, buy this thing. Fundamental analysis checks out. I'm be like, what? And if you don't think that's true, that is what I do for a living. I've helped train 10,000, 20,000 people. I've reached millions of people uh, with fundamental analysis and cryptocurrency training. And a lot of the best buy calls I got were actually from my group. And that's what I wanna show you guys today. If you like the quality of this content, hit like. If you don't, leave some constructive criticism, subscribe for more video updates. And like I always say, if you don't get with it, you will get left behind. Thanks for watching this, guys. Catch you in the next one.